Good day and welcome to this episode of the Sunlum Investments Fast Fund Facts Series. Joining me for today's session is Andrew Kingston. He is the co-head of equities at Sunlum Investment Management. Andrew, welcome. I'm not going to waste a lot of time. You know the drill. I'm going to fire questions at you. I want the facts. I want them relatively fast. So the first question is, you manage two equity funds in the retail market, some top choice and some general equity. What are the main differences between these two funds? So the general equity fund is a broader fund. Um, it uh, has a larger uh, selection of counters in it. And it also has an international component, a separate uh, classification of international stocks. Um, we've used our, our partners uh, in the international market for that. Um, so it uh, appeals to uh, a client with a sort of more moderate outlook. Um, it's a, a lower risk uh, in, uh, sort of fund. Uh, the top choice fund is an expression of our best ideas from a, uh, from a house perspective. So it's uh, typically around 20 stocks. So it will have a bit more volatility. So um, it's not, uh, both funds are orientated towards the long term, uh, but you will probably uh, should expect a bit more volatility from the top choice fund. Well then, why do these funds have different benchmarks? They've got different benchmarks. Um, anyone that's uh, had a look at the benchmarks in South Africa will recognize that uh, there's quite a lot of concentration in certain stocks. And so the idea behind the general equity fund is to have a, a broader selection of best ideas. And so the benchmark that was used there was the CAP SWIX benchmark. So the CAP SWIX benchmark um, tends to uh, moderate the uh, large positions of some of the stocks on the JSE, uh, whereas the uh, top choice fund is, is benchmarked against the SWIX. So um, then the top choice fund is uh, a little bit less benchmark cognizant. Uh, it's more uh, a pure expression um, of uh, stock picking ideas. Uh, and so uh, benchmarks are probably um, a little bit less relevant. Uh, that's the main difference. Well, Andrew, as an equity manager, you don't have the luxury similar to um, uh, multi-asset managers. You can't differentiate or diversify between asset classes. How do you protect these equity portfolios in volatile times like these? Yeah, it's a good uh, question, Hilly. Thanks. Um, I think it's important for investors to have a long-term orientation. So you need to recognize that there are going to be periods uh, where there will be drawdowns in the market, and you just have to remain invested. Um, in fact, Often that's the best time to uh, top up your investments is when there's been a drawdown, a big macro uncertainty. You know, investors think back of the last couple of years. Um, if you had invested um, is after the announcement of uh, COVID and all the stocks were down sort of 20, 30 percent, uh, that would have been a perfect time to invest. Um, the reality is for many people, it's very difficult to know exactly when to time the market. And we don't say to investors they should time the market. It's really more time in the market, so you need to be invested for the long term. There, uh, there is diversification, obviously, within an equity portfolio. So even in difficult times, there will be shares that will perform relatively well. Um, there's dividends that uh, come through as well that support um, returns um, indirectly. Um, but the most important thing is to have a long-term orientation. All right, top choice. As the name says, it's a top choice, the best ideas uh, from your equity team. How do you decide which companies to include in top choice? Yeah, it's a good question, but uh, it's, it's essentially, um, it's a function of our process on the equity side. So uh, we do an analysis of all our stocks um, based on what we call uh, their intrinsic value. Uh, and that uh, basically determines the inherent value for the stocks through a cycle. Uh, we then look at the share price uh, relative to, our, to the value of the stocks. And that's the first step, but it's a lot more um, complicated than that. We take into account risk, um, we've got different scenarios, um, etc. Uh, and so um, it's, a, it's a number of different factors which we uh, take into account before we include a stock. At the end of the day, there's only 22 stocks in the top choice fund, so you really have to work hard uh, to, to warrant um, being included in that. Uh, but it's a, it's a multifaceted process at the end of the day. Andrew, almost done, but you are not off the hook as yet. What differentiates Sunlum Investment Management from other asset managers? 
Yes, that's a good question, Achille, because you know we don't operate in a, alone in the market. We've got uh, strong competitors. I think what differentiates us is um, you know we've got the um, Sunlum um, support. I think also if you look at uh, the structure of our business, uh, we've got a dedicated investment business. Um, it's uh, got different facets to it, but it's got an investment pedigree. So we've got some um, investment uh, um, culture, if you like. And then, um, you know, we've got uh, the long-term orientation that Sunlum provides. Uh, Sunlum's very long-term orientated uh, in their own market, and they provide that thinking to our business as well. So, um, but we've also got a very strong team. Uh, we've been around for a long time. Um, we get the support of, of um, that uh, through um, the group. Um, but, um, you know, it's a, it, it's a strong team. Uh, it's our culture around research, um, it's our proprietary systems, uh, and it's the support of the management at Sunlam. Andrew, thank you very much. As the name says, it was fast. A lot of facts that you shared in a short space of time. To our viewers, thank you very much for watching this episode, and please look out for additional episodes on our other funds or capabilities.